Okay, uh, this is uh, the next section on uh, filling in your fact score sheet. This will have some uh, tips and information on how to do it and some of the um, process you want to go through to systematically make sure you get your score sheet as best you can. And it'll be a process where you do it more than once probably. You'll go through it and then you'll learn stuff and then you go back through it. So we'll uh, look at each section and kind of talk about that a little bit and some of the techniques you want to use. Okay, here, this is uh, just a, a sample one that I kind of did for us. Uh, first off, what you want to do is list all your threats. So, and this is not an entire list. This is just the first page. So you go through and you just think of all of the different threats that you can encounter and uh, events that you can come up with. And you just brainstorm and go through as many as you can think of. I even You even list the ones that uh, probably aren't uh, applicable to your area, but you can always get rid of those later. So it's basically a brainstorm. Then the next thing you do is you look at your frequency, uh, come up with a score on that, and each of these is independent. So you don't think that, hey, this isn't going to happen, uh, so I'm not going to do the area affected or consequences, even if it's uh, like an, uh, a very low probability of it occurring. You still fill out each section as if it did occur. And that way, uh, you you don't get caught short if it does occur. You just it ju you're just looking for a score and an idea of what you need to do to fix it or to uh, compensate for it. Okay, so this is just a blank score sheet. So again, you list all the threats that you think you're going to see, and then you you start looking at each threat independently and you look at the frequency uh, how often it's going to occur the area affected uh, you get your score for that and then the consequences and then you multiply the scores out and that gives you uh, your total score uh, multiplying it is important because it, each area affects the other area so you don't want to just add up the conditions you want to multiply them because as uh, areas uh, uh, like your frequency may be low but your area affected is large which even though the frequency might be low if it's a large area and your consequences are severe they're going to uh, uh, impact your your threat so the other thing you want to do is uh, make notes and comments on your thought process for each score. Um, like if you you put down, okay, why uh, you chose what you did, and that way you can go back. When you go back through, you can look at it and then refine it each time. Okay, now this is the one that I use. It it. You can change these. There's no, you can add uh, like uh, columns as far as uh, something else, but these are the ones that I use, the frequency, area effect, and consequences. You can come up with different things as long as you do it uh, for all your scenarios that you come up with. So in frequency, you go from one to five, you can add numbers, you can go to 10, you can add different, you can do whatever you want. This is just what I used. So one is not likely to occur in your lifetime. So it's very low probability. Uh, two is possible once in your lifetime. Three is possible within the next 10 years. Uh, four is possible within the next five years. And uh, five is like, it, could happen every year. So like a tornado in the Midwest is possible every year. Uh, derechos tend to happen about every five years or so. So you can look at the different situations that you have and then you score them. And again, just score them uh, and then continue on 
uh, with it and it'll all wash out in the end. So the area is affected. Um, what I chose was like, if you can get out within, uh, if it's a two mile walking distance, so the area affected not only is how big the area is, but also how long it might take rescue uh, crews to get to you. So I chose one is like, if it's a small area, like two miles, I can walk two miles, you may change the, the distance and how long it would take a rescue team to get to you. Uh, two is two to five miles, possible walking distance, uh, less than six hours for safety or rescue to get to you. Three would be five to 50 miles, uh, greater than 12 hours for safety rescue to get to you. Four would be 50 to 100 miles, so this is a larger area. It's going to take a couple of days for people to get to you. And greater than 100 miles or a week for safety or rescue. So like a hurricane, because it affects such a large area, they may be within a mile or two of the people that are coming to rescue you, but there's so many people that are involved in it, um, they, they might not get to you for a week, even though they're fairly close. Then your consequences, this is very subjective. The consequences are what are the impacts on you and your family and that based on your situation. So if you have somebody that's very sick and requires like electrical power for um, uh, life support systems or um, special medicines or uh, something like that, then you have to make that judgment call. And this is where it's, it's the most subjective. So I basically put it as uh, one that's minimal impact on you or, for, or in your normal life. So yeah, it's not going to be like if you go through a tornado, it's not going to be normal life, but really you can go to a hotel and stuff and it's, it's going to be inconvenient, but it's not uh, life uh, threatening. Two is impact on normal life lasting more than a week. Uh, some small level of impact on your health or safety to your family. So if you um, are going to have to have assistance with medical care or something like that, uh, you uh, that increases the consequences. Three, major impacts lasting more than a month or a possible impact to health and safety of your family that require some contingency measures. So if you've got to have some contingency measures in place, uh, otherwise, you could have uh, safety or health concerns for your family, then that would be a three. Four is major impacts lasting greater than six months or impacts on the health and safety of your family that require contingency measures to prevent injury or illness. And then five major impacts greater than a year, uh, major impacts on your health or safety of your family that could be life threatening. So those, and you can change these based on your uh, conditions. This is just what I chose. That way I've got a, an idea of the time frame that is going to be inconvenient or uh, maybe require contingency actions. Okay, so again, this is the one, just the first page of the one I did. I think it was three pages long because there was a lot more threats that I came up with, but this gives you a general idea. So um, here you can see, um, I wrote down tornado, extended power outage, earthquakes, hurricanes, wildfires, nuclear disasters, civil unrest, blizzards, ice storms, volcanic interrup uh, eruptions or events, thunderstorms, severe cold. Then I continued on with others, but then you can see the, the, the way I did it. So we live in the Midwest. Uh, tornadoes probably happen about once a year. Uh, we've had a couple, three come through. So you just uh, uh, look at the frequency and, and do your best guess at that. Um, then the area affected, although a tornado can be very devastating, it's usually only a, a small swath, you know, a mile or two across that uh, it affects. And you can walk out into a safe area very quickly. Uh, the consequences, uh, this is where uh, we live in Tornado Alley, but we have a tornado shelter. So the consequences for us is, is lower because we have a tornado shelter. If we didn't have a tornado shelter, lived on a slab 
then it could be uh, much higher. So you'd look at that five times one is one or is five and then uh, times two is 10. So that's, that's the score. Uh, extended power outages. We have ice storms uh, up in the Midwest pretty much every year and we can have some uh, long power outages. Uh, the area affected, of course, is a lot larger because the ice storms tend to uh, occur over large areas. The consequences is uh, a two because, uh, and that comes up to 30. Uh, we lose power about twice a year and live in the country, so I broke that down. And then we have a installed whole house generator with a thousand gallon fuel supply. So that really reduces our consequences. It's more of a inconvenience in just making sure that uh, the generator is uh, running and stuff. So we, we do have power. Earthquakes, now in the Midwest, we don't have earthquakes hardly ever. But I said, you know, once maybe in a lifetime or uh, that we could have it, then the air affected, of course, could be a very large area. So we put four and the consequences would be severe because, I mean, there's not much you can do. Uh, our buildings aren't necessarily rated for earthquakes like in California. So consequences would be more severe. So you'll see that that's a 13 or a 12 on this score. And then hurricanes, we don't get hurricanes up here, but we have wind storms. So you go through each of the categories, you score them, and then you come up and you have a, a score. So like here, just for an example, extended power outages is our, our biggest score. We already have a generator uh, that'll help a lot but we could also have uh, um, more backup uh, power supplies like another generator or um, extra fuel, which would maybe reduce the, uh, the, the score a little bit. So, but you can see that on just on this sheet, that's our, our biggest uh, uh, concern because we are isolated. We're out. Uh, so, uh, a few miles from a, the nearest town and our neighbors are very far away so we're kind of on our own so that that uh, is just something we have to look at, to deal with then uh, you look at these and this is where you can see okay what area should i start uh, or could i uh, could I improve the score by doing something like putting procedures in place, buying equipment um, <clears throat> or other uh, learning different abilities and stuff like that? And we'll cover that um, maybe in the next lecture where I talk about reaping the benefits. So th the first thing you need to do, though, is, is make this uh, fact score sheet so that you understand your situation. Then you can start looking at, okay, um, for here, blizzards, ice storms, thunderstorms, severe cold, extended power outages, tornado, having a whole house generator affects all those areas. So you can start looking at, hey, how can I uh, use resources wisely and, and reduce all the scores, not just one? Right. So uh, that's where you can start getting some economy of scale of where you can start looking at, OK, what's the best choice here to reduce the overall uh, all the scores, not just one. Um, and sometimes it may be all you can do is uh, work on one. And sometimes it's going to be really cheap. Just make a procedure that says, hey, like for a hurricane, uh, if you live near the coast, and you have a procedure that says, hey, if a hurricane is expected to come to our area, we are going to leave a day before you would um, all the other people leave and you have a procedure in place, then the procedure is free. All you got to do is implement that procedure to leave. And then basically you're you get uh, outside the hurricane's path and it's uh, uh, you're in a safe condition and you haven't really spent any money on the plan other than making a procedure that, hey, at this point, we're leaving. 
and you book a hotel somewhere a week ahead of time when you see it coming so you have a place to go or two or three hotels so that you can uh, leave the coast and go somewhere else so your safety is not a concern now your house might be gone but your uh, your family is safe so um, so I'll, I'll keep going on these if you guys like them let me know uh, again make comments on the in the comment section ask questions if you have questions on it and uh, I'll continue the next one I think I'll do is uh, on reaping the benefits of after you do all this work you know how do you reap the benefits of this 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 is just giving you a, a fact sheet on exactly where you stand right now and these numbers you want to you don't want to say hey I'm gonna buy a, a power or a, a generator in a week so I'm gonna say you know I've got a generator you, you look at exactly what you have at this time not what you're gonna do you know once you do it then you go back and you can and reevaluate it but this is just to give you uh, idea of your picture right now so you guys have a blessed day thank you